हेलो एवरीवन सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग यूनिट नंबर वन ऑफ मैकेटोनिक सिस्टम्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट लेसन टू व्हिच इज एम ई एम एस द लॉन्ग फॉर्म ऑफ एम ई एम एस इज माइक्रो इलेक्ट्रो मैकेनिकल सिस्टम्स सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव सीन व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज द मैकेटोनिक सिस्टम and this lecture we are going to see about MEMS that is micro electro mechanical system so electro mechanical system is one of the word into this particular MEMS but uh, you can see that the first uh, word of this MEMS is micro okay so that means whatever electro mechanical systems that we will be using into this are micro in size so micro is around 10 raised to minus 6 so the miniature versions of all these uh, systems are called as mems okay so let us see uh, different uh, possibilities about mems what are the different uh, uh, you can say applications uh, you can say manufacturing process of mems uh, in upcoming lecture so what is mems so as the name suggests MEMS or micro electro mechanical systems is a technique of combining electrical and mechanical components together on a chip to produce a system of miniature dimension. So miniature dimension is very important over here that we are using uh, you can say system which is of very small size. Okay. So MEMS is the integration of number of micro components on a single chip which allows the micro system to both sense and control the environment. So you have to sense the environment, you have to control the environment. So whatever sensors, actuators are used uh, should be in a very miniature size or you can say micro systems. The components that are integrated on a single chip using microfabrication technologies. So, whatever manufacturing processes that we are using are different in case of uh, this type of systems. Okay. So, let us see what exactly is the sensor uh, uh, is which is used in uh, MEMS. So, sensor is nothing but a device which is used uh, to measure physical quantity such as uh, temperature, it could be pressure, it could be flow rate, it could be radiations, it could be chemicals, it could be pathogens or it could be humidity levels, it could be about sound, noise, vibrations. So it could be about multiple uh, you can say physical quantities. Uh, the device which is used for measuring these kind of quantities and converting it into electronic signal. So, what do I mean by electronic signal? It could be either uh, voltage or current or maybe change in resistances. So, uh, it is uh, actually converting it into electronic signal without modifying the environment. Okay, so this is called as sensor. Why we are using MEMS sensors? The reasons, uh, these are the reasons why we are using uh, MEMS sens uh, sensors. First is it is very small in size. Okay, so size is very small. Uh, so it is uh, almost 10 raised to minus 6 uh, of a regular sensor. So it is very small size kind of sensor. Uh, second is uh, as it is smaller size, it has lower power consumptions. So, the power which is consumed by this sensor are very less and that is why for uh, the systems which are uh, you can say uh, the portable or you can say uh, the, the flying systems or uh, you can say the systems which are very miniature kind of versions, uh, you are required to use very less power. So, it is running on very less kind of power. Uh, it is more sensitive to the input variations. So, whatever input variations which are getting, it is very sensitive because it is very small in size. So, all the cross sections and all those things are very less. It is cheaper due to the mass production because uh, it has to be produced in a huge quantity as it is very less because you are, you are producing it in a grid kind of manner and that is why it is uh, mass produced. As it is mass produced, it is cheaper than a regular sensor. It is less invasive. 
than larger devices. So, the mechatronic systems uh, can be seen by your naked eyes, but these kind of systems are very small in size and that is why it is less invasive. Uh, that is why one of the uh, reason or one of the application of these kind of sensors are spying purpose. So, if you wanted to spy your enemy, uh, if you wanted to spy uh, some uh, kind of uh, work or if you wanted to observe continuously changes in the environment or you can say some ocean where uh, it is very difficult to monitor uh, for 24 hours uh, for collecting real time data we are using this kind of devices. Okay. So, what are the different materials used for this kind of uh, you can say fabrication? Uh, they are silicon, polymers, metals and ceramics. So, these are the similar materials which are used for preparing regular sensors or mechatonic systems. So, it is very much similar that you can use, uh, you can say such kind of systems. But, the manufacturing processes used for manufacturing these kind of fabrications are different. So, what are these uh, processes? It could be uh, the basic processes can be categorized into three categories. Uh, the first category is deposition, the second category is patterning and third category is etching. So, what is this uh, deposition, patterning and uh, etching? So, deposition is uh, nothing but uh, chemical reaction on a physical reaction which is happening. So, deposition will be happening on one material will be deposited on another material. Uh, the second process is patterning. So, patterning is nothing but uh, we are using photosensitive material uh, and we are giving selective exposure to a radiation source of light. So, one laser light or radiation source will be uh, you can say used uh, and photosensitive material will be there and uh, the uh, the area which is in contact with that particular light will be uh, you can say machined. Okay, So, this is called as a patterning kind of process and uh, third is etching. So, what exactly is the etching uh, kind of process? So, etching is nothing but uh, it is a strong acid. So, etching is uh, done with the help of strong acid it is a chemical process uh, to cut into unprotected parts of the metal uh, surfaces to create design in. Okay. So, there are two types of itching, uh, one is wet itching and one is dry itching. The kind of uh, you can say chemicals that we are using based on that we can categorize it into uh, wet itching or dry itching. So, these are the basic processes uh, which are used for fabrication of the MEMS kind of devices. So, where it is applied or what are the different applications of this uh, MEMS devices? Uh, it is used extensively into medical uh, sciences. Okay. So, it could be about uh, bio cavity sensor. So, what is this bio cavity sensor? So, it is device distinguish cancerous cells from non cancerous kind of cells. So, uh, you can uh, you can insert this particular device into the bo human body and it uh, try to detect what are the cells which are uh, cancerous and which are not cancerous. The second is uh, smart pill. Okay, again, this is a capsule kind of thing. Uh, you are, uh, it is inserted into the uh, human body. You can uh, literally uh, take it as a capsule, and uh, after getting into the uh, stomach or it, after getting into the body, it will start collecting some uh, data, uh, whatever it is made for. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, this kind of capsules can be inserted into any uh, place in your body. So. Uh, it can be placed at any uh, you can say location and it can be used for monitoring or you can say collecting various types of data. It can be used for uh, even uh, diagnostic purpose also. Okay. So, this is about a smart pill. Uh, and third is about uh, retina. Uh, this is the retina which is used uh, MEMS based array for uh, can, that can be inserted to the blind person for providing partial sight. Okay. So, uh, it, it, there are many other applications in medical science as it is micro uh, you can say in size uh, it can it is used extensively into medical science because you can insert these kind of devices into the human body and you can carry out the work over there. Okay. So, this is about applications in medical science. Uh, there are many applications into marine science. So, uh, for oil exploration, for global weather predictions, for uh, monitoring 
water quality for measuring parameters uh, like health of the uh, structures in the sea or uh, for studying uh, aquatic plants and animals you can use it uh, and uh, even for the military operations you can use uh, this kind of uh, devices uh, to be used okay uh, in military operations marine military operations uh, you know that it is very difficult to uh, have uh, surveillance on a marine kind of uh, things because uh, you you do not live over there on land you know that you can place some soldiers and all those things but uh, for collecting data from a marine uh, side it is very difficult and challenging and for that we are using such kind of mems kind of systems uh, the array of mems sensors can be uh, spread uh, you can say into the ocean floor to detect enemies uh, submarines because the submarines are very difficult to uh, detect okay because they are uh, coming under water they are not coming out of the water and that is why very difficult uh, it is for uh, seeing that some enemy submarine is coming so you you are just uh, having that kind of arrays are uh, putted over there and uh, which will uh, whenever submarine is getting contacted with this kind of array you will come to know that okay uh, some submarine is coming over here so uh, for detection purpose we are using or this mems sensors uh, uh, you can say the the pressure sensors or accelerometers are being used in anti torpedo weapons uh, in a submarine or ships uh, the mems sensors are also uh, responsible in torpedoes for detonating uh, torpedo at right time or hitting the target environment or prevent any premature explosion so uh, torpedoes are the kind of missiles for uh, you can say damage uh, enemy uh, assets and uh, even these missiles are having such kind of sensors for uh, detecting some uh, you can say uh, parameters based on that it is taking decisions uh, when to blast or, or when to uh, when to prevent the explosions etc so uh, these things are uh, used in marine military operations apart from marine military operations it is extensively used in military operations it is extensively used in many other applications uh, like uh, the spying applications or you can say it is also used in environmental uh, you can say detection and uh, uh, many many other applications nowadays uh, all the systems are getting miniature in size and that is why for uh, for collecting large amount of real time data in a smaller size we are using mems systems okay so quick question uh, for you all uh, uh, just uh, explain what exactly is the uh, mems so what is the long form of mems so quickly you can try to explain uh, you can try to answer Yes, MEMS is Micro Electro Mechanical Systems. Okay, so uh, many st students must have got this kind of concepts. So let us conclude this particular topic. So MEMS are promising uh, effective technique of producing sensors of high quality at lower cost. So high quality sensors which are available at lower cost and which are in smaller size. So it has many many advantages and thus we can conclude that MEMS can operate uh, proactive, uh, proactive in computing world connected uh, computing nodes automatically acquiring and act real time data about the physical environment and helping to improve lives promoting a better uh, understanding of the world and enabling people to become more productive so uh, this is what uh, is the mems so i hope uh, you have understood the concept of uh, what exactly is mems so with this, we will stop here in today's lecture. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.